Hey guys, Backyard Scientist here, and today we're going to be scientist. working... Backyard Scientist. Whoa, hey! It's the Hacksmith. You might know James is the Hacksmith on YouTube also. Well, I'm going to be trying to make a sword out of thermite. Okay. So, you know, hopefully we'll be able to pull a sword made with molten metal from thermite. I've, I've never actually played with thermite before. Really? Like, I've done so many things, I have not played with thermite yet. Let's get started. Yeah, let's get started. <laughs> Wait, that's my line. <laughs> The thermite reaction is a lot like baking a cake. A small variation in the recipe could throw the whole thing off. So say if you substituted gluten-free flour for regular flour, your cake is probably not gonna taste that good. And thermite's the same way. Here we have two basic variations for iron thermite. This is red iron oxide, the classic, with the chemical formula of Fe2O3. And then this is black iron oxide, which has a chemical formula Fe304. The big differences between the two is by weight, by weight, black iron oxide contains more iron per gram than red iron oxide. Black iron oxide has 72% raw iron per weight, and red iron oxide has 70. So it's only a 2% difference, but the main thing is the density in them. Now you can tell that the black iron oxide is way denser than the red iron oxide because it takes up less space in the container. Because the black iron oxide is denser and is more compact, I'm hoping that the iron oxide and the aluminum will be closer together, giving a more efficient reaction and producing more molten iron instead of getting blown off and lost as heat, which I think happens with the red iron oxide more but I'm not too sure, so let's test them out side by side and see what one gives the most molten iron. Here we go. <laughs> Why is the bottle of lighter fluid so close? <laughs> we waited for the molten iron to cool and then we took it out of the flower pot, sprayed it down with some water, and then brought it inside to weigh on the scale. Let's take a look at the results. The red iron oxide produced 120 grams of thermite, and the black iron oxide thermite produced 175 grams of thermite. That's a 43% yield by weight. All right, that was awesome, but I gotta get back to my other collab. It was awesome to meet you in person, yeah. and thanks for showing me how to make thermite. Yep. You're definitely gonna see that on my channel sometime soon. That's fun. And hopefully we can do a full collab at some point. It'd be awesome to have you come up to Canada, yeah. if you guys, play with uh, the toys. Think that's a good idea, or you have any ideas that we could do together, you can put it down yeah. in the comments. Well, let us know in the comments below. Yep, but thanks for stopping by. Thanks for helping me out building this sword. I'll send you a picture of it when it's done. Awesome, thank you. Well, I'm sad to see James go, but it's time to start making the sword, and I'm going to be using insulating fire brick to make the mold. I started by drawing out the rough shape of the sword and then using a router to remove material from the brick. Then I filled the mold with sand and poured it into the water to get a rough idea of how much metal I would need. The sand displaced about 150 cubic centimeters of water, but let's round it up to 200 because sand doesn't pack perfectly. Now steel has a density of about 8 grams per cubic centimeter, so that means I need about 1600 grams or 3.5 pounds of metal to go into that mold. If 400 grams of black thermite produced 175 grams of wrought iron, that means that the reaction was about 43% efficient. So if I want to scale that up, that means I'll need about 3,700 grams of thermite mixture, or that's about 8 pounds of thermite mixture, to hopefully cast the sword. I did some research to try to find out how I could make the thermite reaction more efficient, how I could make it produce more metal. I was reading how they weld together railroad tracks with thermite, and it turns out that they use about 5-10% to steel added to the thermite mixture to produce more molten iron. So I went ahead and ordered about 50 pounds of these stainless steel shot blasting beads. I have two theories why adding the stainless steel to the thermite mixture will make for a better product. And number one is the iron that comes from the thermite is just raw iron. It's very brittle, it doesn't have any good mechanical properties at all, so hopefully the steel will produce a better quality sword. And number two is there's a lot of wasted heat in thermite. You know, there's big flames coming up, and if I could use that flames to instead melt metal, I should get more metal, hopefully. It's been a super long day, but I finally got everything put together. Check it out right here. So here's what I have from the ground up. Inside the two five gallon buckets, I have the mold standing upright and surrounded by packed sand. And then on top, I have the thermite mixture, which is in a larger flower pot down here. And I filled the inside between the two with sand. So if the flower pot containing the thermite cracks, it will just, uh, it won't spill out onto the ground. Okay, everything's in there. The mold's nice and secure. All we have to do is light it on fire. Okay. Well, everything was going good until some of the thermite managed to find its way out of the crucible anyway. Some of it fell down next to the plastic bucket, set the bucket on fire, which allowed some of the steel to escape the mold as you see here. Well, that's fine. I've got an idea I want to try for the next time anyway. Alright, so I'm going to try again, and this time I'm going to be using wire to hold the bricks together because I feel like last time the molded metal just went right between the sand and out the bucket. Okay, I've got one more try before sundown, and this time I have some supporters, so do you think it'll work this time? Yeah! 
Yeah, those are my neighbors. They're gonna they're gonna help me out. Okay, here we go. Once the bubbling dies down, that means that it's broken the metal seal and fallen into the mold and hopefully doesn't fall out the side of the bucket like it did last time. Come on. I put a thin steel disc at the bottom of the crucible because I thought it would give some time for this molten steel and the slag to separate, giving me a cleaner product. Unfortunately, it wasn't melting through, so I had to punch through that little disc manually. And it worked, but it was scary and dangerous, but cool. It looks like what? Shooting stars. Yeah, it does. It looks like lava. It pretty much is lava. So Watch what happens cool. when I stick this in here. Oh, oh. oh <laughs> <laughs> That oh, fast. Wow. Oh, wow. It worked this time, right? I it? think it did. What? Whoa. All this sand? What if it just fell down? Kind of like this? Because it, it was hot. Is that a brick? Yeah, those are bricks. Those are called fire bricks. That's probably what, what the firehouse is made of. It's what like ovens and fireplaces are made out of. So now I don't know what to do. How do I get it out to break it open? Surprisingly, the mold was cool enough to touch, so I just put on some welding gloves, brought in the garage, and began chipping away at the mold to reveal the sword on the inside. Unfortunately, I was just a little bit short on the metal, so the handle was just about three inches short, but I spent all night cutting, grinding, welding, and polishing, and put a new handle on this sword. Then I heat treated the blade using my aluminum forge, and I dunked it into a fish tank. Well, without further ado, here it is, everybody. The sword that is completely made out of thermite. It is, it's very heavy, it's about five pounds, but it works more like an axe than a sword. It is really sharp though, and I spent a lot of time putting a mirror finish on it and making it look super cool. But there's one more thing that I want to do to it, and I'm going to etch the blade with nitric acid, and this should let out a cool pattern. We should be able to see the grains of the steel on this blade, so let's try it out. I brushed on some diluted nitric acid solution, and after a couple minutes, some beautiful patterns started to appear in the steel. The crystals that you see are caused by the steel cooling from a liquid to a solid. Now, the faster that the steel cools, the smaller the crystals will be. The larger the crystals, it means the steel took a long time to solidify. And that's what happened on this plate. It was molten for a relatively long amount of time. Normally in your steel, you don't want large crystals like this, but I think it's pretty cool. Unfortunately, the blade isn't perfect. There's some small dents and indentations of it from where there might have been an air bubble trapped in the steel, but I don't think that should get in the way of chopping some stuff. So let's try and see what this sword can actually do. All right, first up, we're just gonna try a simple can of soda. Three, two, one. Woo, that sounded like a gunshot when it went off. You see that it almost chopped all the way through. Let's try something a little bit easier, maybe a pumpkin. Here we go. Ah, oh, yeah, that was no problem at all. Now I'm gonna see what it can do to one of these steel soup cans, and uh, don't worry, I'm not wasting food. It's vegetables. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, whew. That was a close one. I almost almost got hit by the soup, but same thing. Yeah, chop, chop right through that can. Didn't make it through all the way to the bottom of the can, but I think that's just because the wood thing I'm chopping on isn't exactly perfectly level. Well, I managed to cut through some aluminum soda cans, steel soup cans, a nice soft pumpkin, and then Sandra pitched some oranges to me and I cut them in half Fruit Ninja style. Hey, it might have its imperfections, but it is totally a real sword. Okay, okay, try again. Oh, well, that was a good one. Yeah. Well, everybody, that's it for the Thermite Sword. Thank you for sticking around. I know I didn't upload a video in a while. I kind of hit like a video writer's block, but I don't know, I got a bunch more Thermite and I've got some more plans for it. A couple people also tried to make Thermite knives recently. I'll put their links down below in the description. And thanks for hanging around, guys. See you next time. Bye.